Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ray and I just finished doing my second year physics here in Cambridge and in the summer of 2019 I achieved an A star in A level chemistry. Now in this video I'm going to be going over how I achieved that A star, like my workflow, any resources I used, any tips I have for how you can also achieve an A star. So do check out the timestamps in the description and jump between the video. And also in case you're interested I did OCRA for A level chemistry and if you're doing that board as well then more of this advice will be applicable to you. If not, then hopefully you can still take away most of the advice and apply to your own board. So I'll quickly outline my A-level workflow, which I've explained in more detail in an A-level workflow video, which will be linked above right now. But basically it consisted of first getting the specification and downloading it from the official OCR website in my case, but it depends on your exam board, and then keep it in Google Drive um, and because in Google Drive, I could annotate and highlight any parts which I wanted without having to print it out. And I use that to make sure I was going through the course at the right pace when the teacher was teaching it. Then in class, I would go and learn the content itself and make notes during the lesson. And on the weekends, after finishing any major topics or like a large chunk of a topic, I would turn these class notes into flashcards whilst using some online chemistry related resources, which I will mention later in the video. Uh, more detail on how I do this uh, is in a video called Learning New Content, which should be linked above right now, where I go through a works example. Anyways, I would put all those flashcards onto a digital flashcard app called Anki, and I would go through the flashcards every day because digital flashcards are so much better than normal flashcards, uh, physical flashcards, because they actually tell you when you should be going over that flashcard, depending on how well you're getting it right or wrong. I also have a video on how you can use Anki in case you don't know, which should be linked above right now. Now too. And then I would do practice questions consistently throughout the year after having learned a topic and that would usually be through the homework the teacher was setting us. But in some cases I would also think to myself, oh it's been a long time since I went over this challenging topic. Let me make sure I still know it. So I would find some practice questions online like what from websites like Physics and Maths Tutor which I'll talk about later. And then basically go through the questions and any questions which I didn't entirely understand or couldn't get I would go and ask my teachers about. And about two to three months before my exams I would start doing past papers. Now I started of doing the old specification pass papers, both the AS and A2 papers for my A2 exams. And when I was preparing for my AS final exams, uh, at the end of year 12, I would do like a bunch of AS past papers as well. And I would keep track of them on my past paper tracker. And I started off with the old specification papers because 80 to 90% of the content is similar to the new spec. And it allowed me to make sure I actually had the wording right and I knew all the keywords. And then I would move on to the new specification papers. And that meant I could make the most of the new specification papers and focus more on the analytical problem solving side because I knew I had the content nailed down. And in between doing these papers, I'd also add on some mistakes file, which I had. And with that file, I would go through it regularly. And even before my exams or doing more practice tests at home, I'd remind myself of the mistakes I frequently make and that would uh, like remind me what to look out for in the actual exam as well because I would slowly develop a habit of looking out for these mistakes which I just have a habit of making. So that was a brief overview of my workflow for A-level chemistry. As for a few resources which I found to be really useful for helping me learn the content, the first of which was YouTube because like if you don't understand your teachers then often you can find someone on YouTube explaining it much better than your teachers can or if your teachers are going a bit too fast then you can find videos which sort of explain it in a different way or uh, explain it slowly and you can also like rewind the video as many times as you like and stuff. So a few channels which I particularly liked, uh, the first of which being Allery Chemistry, uh, which I have here right now. And if you go to playlists, then you can find um, like his playlist on a bunch of AES and A2 content. And he's also has some shorter revision videos. So like OCR A, A year two revision. And like that just goes through a bunch of material as well. I mainly stuck to the generic whiteboard tutorials and I also quite enjoyed my chem guy. So he is more specifically related to OCR if you do that. So if I go to playlists again, then you can see a bunch of his playlists and I just sort of watch a bunch of videos through the playlists. And especially some of the walkthrough videos where he walks through some exam questions I found to be particularly useful. Uh, but if you want something which is more AQA specific because you do AQA chemistry, then I heard this is a good channel. And you can also go to playlists and find some of the structure. Um, of everything here. But more generally, if you want to find something which is more specific to your board, then you can just basically search like OCR A, Chemistry, A level, or whatever your board is, say it's like at Excel or like, uh, I don't know whichever boards and what other boards there are out there. But if you just search that, then you can find a bunch of channels related to it. Now, it can be easy to like find three, four, five different channels and like just watch all of the videos by them. But you get to a point where it's just not worth it. So I'd usually stick to like one or two channels um, and I would only watch those channels. So for me, that was my chem guy and Allery chemistry. And if I don't, didn't understand like one particular video, then I would uh, watch another video by like Allery chemistry if I didn't send my chem guy 
differently and vice versa. And also for when I understood the content quite well in class and I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a different explanation would be a bit, which would be a bit better, then I would still go in the video and watch it at like two or three times speed. Uh, and that would be really useful for sort of like helping me skim through the information on the video quite quickly. As for other resources, I also liked ChemRevise because they had some really good concise revision guides for chemistry and I would only use those after I understood the material through lessons and watching videos online because otherwise revision guides just don't make much sense. So on this website you can see they have the OCR revision guides, you can also find them for some other boards as well, and I would just go on one of these revision guides and then I would cross check all my notes before turning them into flashcards to make sure I had everything included. Um, and they were like pretty concise and it was just useful for checking as well. And often I would find like explanations here, which I preferred, or there would be some good diagrams, which I wanted to include in my notes, in which case I would use the snipping tool by pressing like Windows, Shift and S. I don't know what it is for Mac. And then I would just like snip one of these and then it would come up. And now the next resource is ChemGuide. So this has a bunch of information on, which goes uh, well beyond the A-level as well, but it's particularly useful for helping you understand some like really basic concepts. Or like if you're not satisfied with your understanding of something in class and you can't get a satisfactory understanding from like watching YouTube videos or even the revision guide, then like just reading a few of the pages on here can be particularly useful if you find the right page or if you just search Google search like chem guide and then followed by the topic name, you can find something on chem guide because when reading through some of this information, it explains it really well and it has some really good diagrams as well. And it has a lot of notes about like how this may technically not be right and at university level, you learn something different. Don't be afraid if you like don't understand all of it. Uh, I didn't understand all of it when I was using it. And don't feel a temptation to like read every single page because I had that temptation and it's just not really too useful. It's useful for understanding concepts which you're very unhappy about, you're understanding with, and then you want to improve your understanding or if you particularly enjoy chemistry and you want to take your understanding a bit further. Next up was the CG provision guide. So you can see I have the online version right here and you can see like um, the revision guide can be quite information dense and like I said for revision guides you have to make sure you understand the material first and you've learned the content either through class or through watching YouTube videos. If you jump straight to revision guide then you're, ba you're barely going to get any value out of it because it just won't make as much sense to you because the whole point is it's a revision guide so it's meant to help you revise the information not help you learn the information for the first time. But yeah this would also be a good place for you like screenshot any diagrams to include my notes of flashcards because I had the digital version. And next up is a textbook. So I don't have it with me right now because I returned it back to a school library when I finished my A-levels but whichever textbook your teacher recommends uh, for your exam board then like the end of chapter questions can be pretty useful for that. As for the learning the content from the textbook itself I didn't find it too useful because it sometimes went on or waffled on or like um, it just gave useless useless information and I find the videos to be much better in helping me understand material for the first time. Generally I think that many A-level textbooks can be quite poor or bad so if you don't understand the material from the textbook then don't feel bad it's like usually because a textbook explanation isn't good enough and not anything to do with your own ability because like sometimes I just wouldn't understand textbook and I think it would be my fault but usually it's the textbook's fault. And next up for finding like practice questions which I could attempt there was physics and maths tutor. So if I go to like the A-level section and go to like chemistry revision, then I can find uh, chemistry A-levels from 2015. And if I go to my A-level, OCRA, then I can see how it's split by papers. So I can go to like module three, and then I can find like a bunch of questions on this. So I can find like M3 changes question paper, uh, and then the mock scheme as well. So then I can print this off and attempt the questions myself. And then after that, I can go to mock scheme and like mock the questions as well, and basically make notes on anything I was getting wrong and add that onto a mistakes file, which I mentioned earlier. So using the topic test from Physics Map Tutor as well as any homework I was given was how I practiced the topics throughout the year and made sure I was comfortable, especially with the topics I found to be the most difficult. So now I'll go into a few tips for A-level chemistry. The first of which is to use the keywords. Now this is something I really struggled with to begin with, and I kept dropping mocks as a result just because I wasn't using the right keywords. I was kind of giving a hand wavy explanation and using the right keywords gives like the examiner or your teacher no doubts about whether to actually give you the mark because like you've used a keyword in the mock scheme. And this uh, came from doing more practice questions because doing more practice questions and, and marking them yourself, you slowly pick up on the keywords that the examiners are looking for. And even if you come across a new question, you more or less have a sense of like what keywords you should be using for this specific topic. 
And I would also add these keywords onto my flashcards when I was going through them and be like, oh, this is like a keyword that I have to be using. So I'd usually like make it bold or like put in capital letters. So I was learning the keywords with those topics as well. In some cases, it doesn't matter too much if you're not using the keywords, as long as your understanding is like kind of right and the examiner can see it. But using the keywords basically gives them no doubt about whether to give you the mock. So I'd highly recommend learning them. So my next tip is to be specific in the answers. And this is something I struggled with initially as well. I just wasn't specific enough. So in some cases where you have like temperature rises or something, rather than saying a vague generic statement, like one has a larger temperature rise than the other, write something more specific specific like uh, like substance A or like beaker A's temperature rise is double that of beaker B's if it's pretty easy for you to figure out that like it's double in this case. Or like when comparing molecules and you're comparing like bond strengths or something or saying that one forms more bonds than the other, if it forms like twice as many bonds and it's pretty obvious for you to work out that's twice as many bonds, then just write twice as many or and write the names on the molecules instead. And this can be something particularly easy to like trip up on or just not do, but it can be very important when it comes to like molecules. So whilst you can understand a concept really well, if you miss like small details of saying like, oh, the temperature rises double or something, then you won't get the mark because you weren't specific enough in your answer. So my next tip is to make sure you know the organic pathways. So I started learning the organic pathways about two to three months before my exams, like in real detail and knowing like how to get from one molecule to the other or like these intermediary molecules as well. And I did this by going on Google and searching like OCR A, uh, A level chemistry, uh, organic pathways. So if I just search that, then I can find a document by OCR. And you can see it has organic pathways right here. And then there is the aromatic organic pathways and for phenols as well. And then there's a blank version as well for all of them. So you can just go through the blank version and try to fill it out yourself and then check against the actual version to make sure like you have the right conditions and stuff. And I would go through this daily about like uh, one to two months before my exams, or more or less every day. And you can just find the organic pathways for your board as well, just by searching your board name, then organic pathways, or you can even find it for the AS level because these are all uh, two years of reactions and uh, you will have a smaller subset for like the AS exams. Also, do try to really understand what's going on in the calculations in A-level chemistry because they can be some easy marks, but they can also throw in a curveball and try to trip you up if you don't understand it too well. And this can be especially important if you're not taking A-level maths. So an example I kind of use is like the first time I learned about Hess's cycles and Hess's law and stuff, it was a bit confusing for me and sometimes I would just end up getting the calculations wrong. But I made an effort to like understand the reasoning behind and then once I understood the reasoning behind it and everything, then I can basically solve like any Hess's cycle questions. Um, so like make sure you understand the calculations, especially if they like throw in a small detail, then you can account for that because you've actually understood it and you're not like running some algorithm or like repeating some kind of robotic procedure or something when doing the calculations. So my next tip is to not get too caught up in the practicals throughout the year. So I was really worried about my practicals and I thought I had to be paying like 100% attention during each practical and memorizing all the small details and stuff like that in case it comes up on the exam. And that's really not the case, especially for OCR chemistry. Um, because like, why would they ask about that? It, you're already learning the content in class anyway. And the practicals are just a chance for you to apply the content you're learning in class. Now, the thing I focused on more in practicals was not so much about the content on the practical itself, more about the skills I was developing and like the generic things that you'd be on the lookout for or like just practical skills in general. So like being able to do titrations is a practical skill and you can gain some marking points by like answering a question about titrations and also keywords to do titrations like like looking at the bottom of the meniscus. You don't have to make flashcards on like every practical you've done and try to learn all the details. Focus more on the skills you're developing during these practicals and then practice a few practical based questions as well, which you can find online or you can do through past papers. So like the OCR, A-level chemistry, like I think paper three had most of the practical related questions where you got a chance to apply the content you were learning to like new practicals, which you had never seen before. So that's mostly for the video. As for some like concluding advice or something, like I personally found A-level chemistry to be the hardest subject for me just because of like how specific I had to be and I had to like pay attention to a lot of details and stuff. And whilst I thought I understood the content or material well enough, sometimes I just wouldn't get the marks and questions because of those two reasons. Now, don't worry initially that if you get a bad result in A-level chemistry or like for your first few, few topics test, I think like for my first one, I probably got a C or something. I just remember not doing particularly well. And I thought, okay, well, well this is a foundations in chemistry topic test. Like if I'm not doing well, then what chance do I have at A-level chemistry? And then I ended up being like one of the only two
few people in my school to get an A star in A level chemistry after getting like a C or something in the first topic test. So do be consistent, do put in the hours and do like work smart as well as work hard. And A level chemistry can be quite fun and enjoyable if you're like willing to sort of enjoy the process and not tell yourself that it's super difficult. Um, because the more times you tell yourself something is difficult, the more likely you are to give up and the less likely you are to enjoy it. So if you want to learn a bit more about my whole revision process, then I do have a series called Studying Effectively for GCSEs and A-Levels, which should be linked somewhere right now. Uh, but that's basically it for the video. I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.